Hi, this is Caroline Turner Cole auditioning for 99 Ashes. December 4th, 10:15 p.m., Dakota. I parked Lisa's car in the darkest corner behind the casino and pulled out the last of the dope. I took out a pocket mirror, carefully poured powder onto it, and cut it into two thin lines. I snorted the first line through a rolled up dollar bill and sat back in my seat, waiting for the familiar rush to zing through my veins. The whole day was a total crapshoot when it came to selling Tamara's ring, but now I had a new plan. It wasn't foolproof, but unfortunately, it was what I had. I looked down at the last line, and a scornful laugh rose from the sick places inside of me. This was what Ryan got for trusting an addict with selling his drugs. I mean, honestly, he should have known better. He was, without a doubt, losing his mind. Or maybe us Jensen sisters were his Achilles heel. I railed the second line and put the mirror away. We might be Ryan's weakness, but as soon as he was released from jail, I'd be his whipping boy. He'd not only make me pay for the drugs I used instead of selling, but he'd take the anger he held toward Tamara out on me, too and his rage would have grown exponentially. I strung my purse over my shoulder and climbed out of the Monte Carlo. The two hundred and some change that I'd stolen from Tamara was still tucked safely in the side pocket of my handbag. If I played my cards right, or more literally, the roulette wheel right, I could possibly make twelve hundred tonight. My phone vibrated and I dug through my purse. I pulled out the wrong phone and noticed a message. My phone continued to rattle as I opened the message in Tamara's phone. It was from Romeo. A simple, I miss you. Oh, doesn't that just warm the cockles of my jaded heart? Romeo sure does love her. I thought about her engagement ring in the bottom of my bag. The teensiest amount of guilt twanged at my insides, but I quickly shrugged it off. Tamara would be fine. Romeo would buy her another ring, even better than the first, and they'd slip off into the sunset together. I put Tamara's phone back into my purse and grabbed mine. Another missed call from Lisa. She was probably furious about the car being eight hours late, but what was I supposed to do? I had to figure this mess out. I walked through the lobby of the casino. Dennis, the security guard, threw me a friendly wave. I headed straight to the roulette table. Rhoda my favorite dealer, stood behind the wheel. Dakota, good to see you. Where have you been? Oh, you know, around. I took a 50 out and tossed it down on the table. I'll take blue. There were two other people I didn't recognize sitting at the table. An older woman, dressed to the nines, sat at the end, a stack of pink chips in front of her. To my left sat a nerdy guy with a big nose and thick glasses, drinking a scotch on the rocks. I ordered a Long Island and watched for a few spins before I decided I was ready to play. It hit red three times in a row, so I put half my chips on black and waited for the others to bet. Nerdy glasses guy scattered his chips over the board, and pink chips woman put ten bucks worth on the zeros. Rhoda dropped the marble, and I held my breath as I waited. It landed on red. I watched my chips as they were taken away. Not a good start. The waitress came back with my Long Island and I took a large drink. I watched a few more rounds. The next spin, Pink Chips won big on the zeros. And then it hit red again. Nerdy Glasses Guy lost both times. He cursed and shot back the remainder of his scotch. Okay, my turn to win. I put $25 worth of chips on black and bit the inside of my cheek as I watched the marble spin around the wheel, bouncing in and out of the numbers. Beside me, a man's hand dropped a twenty on the table. The marble landed in black, and excitement filled me as Rhoda doubled my chips. Good to see you, Dakota. I turned toward the husky voice. Timothy Moore stood beside me, or should I say Officer Moore? Except now he wasn't in uniform, and a five o'clock shadow lined his perfectly etched jawline. Officer Moore? I said curtly, arching an eyebrow. He hated it when I called him that, especially because of our history. He leveled me with a smoldering gaze. I'm glad to see Ryan was lying. Duh, Ryan's a liar. I turned my attention back to the game. Rhoda was waiting on me. 
I waved her on to let her know I was letting it ride. Tim put five on the middle row. I watched as the little ball spun round the wheel. It settled on number 17, black. We both won. Timothy grabbed his chips off the table, but I let mine ride again. It hit black again. My luck was changing. I smiled, tossed Rhoda a five dollar tip, and continued to let it ride. A massive wave of adrenaline spiked inside of me as it once again hit black. Bam, four times in a row, baby. I loved this game. Up 200 in just a few minutes. Timothy slid a hand to the middle of my back. You should give it a rest for a minute. My skin tingled where his hand touched. I looked at him defiantly. Thanks for the tip, but I don't need you watching out for me. A few more double downs, and I'd have my 1200. He tilted his head to the side, his features holding a depth of emotion I couldn't quite understand. You sure about that? Everyone needs a guardian angel every once in a while. I moved my chips to red. Whatever. This was not the time to slow my roll. I was on a streak. I always hated when Tim got all serious and caring. He'd been this way since we were kids, long before he lost his baby weight and filled out in all the right places. Back then, Tim was my best friend. His house had been my safe haven away from the fighting at mine, until seventh grade, when we started drifting apart. Well, it was more like a clean break. I started using drugs, he begged me not to. I told him to get lost. He never did, though. Timothy Moore had always been on the periphery of my life. The silver marble landed on red. Yeah, baby, up $400. I pulled the other 200 and exchanged it for chips. 600 total. Just one more win was all I needed. Tim leaned in and spoke quietly, but the concern in his tone was palpable. Be careful, Dakota. You keep playing games, and you're gonna get hurt. Why couldn't he just leave me alone to live my own life? I slid my pile of chips to black and hesitated. Maybe I should stay on red. No, black. Timothy and his caution were seriously messing with my juju. I decided on black, and Rhoda spun the wheel. I held my breath. The silver marble fell into the black, popped, and then settled into red. My heart stopped for at least three seconds, and then started again. Rhoda gave me a sympathetic look as she pulled away my stack of chips. I glared at Timothy. Thanks for jinxing me, I stormed off. So freaking close. I could taste the win, and now it was gone. Just like that, back to square one. Dakota, Timothy shouted after me. Stay away from me. I yelled over my shoulder. I lit a smoke as soon as I was outside, the air damp, as usual. Exactly what I'd expect on a December night on the Olympic Peninsula. The light rhythm of footsteps on the pavement sounded behind me. I took in another drag, wanting to punch something. I said get lost. I checked to see if he obeyed, and my pulse accelerated. Timothy hadn't followed me out. Justin and Avery had. Or as I like to call them, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, a couple of Ryan's low-life cronies. They were both as dumb as a box of rocks, but they could do some damage. I'd seen it firsthand. I quickened my pace. Great. Why did I have to park so far back? The car was close, but still about 20 feet away. Come on, sugar, we're not here to hurt you. We just want to talk. Avery spun me around and grabbed hold of my wrist. I wrestled my arm free. He slammed me against the side of Lisa's car. Are you stupid? I said we just want to talk. Talk? Yeah, right. I'd seen what they did to people when they said they just want to talk. Justin pulled out a switchblade and brought it near my face. Why are you running from us? He pressed the blade against my skin. You have a real pretty face, Dakota. I'd hate to have to ruin it. My limbs went numb as panic coursed through them. What do you want? Where was Tim when I needed him? Ryan wants the money you owe him. You and I both know Ryan's in jail. I spat out the words, teeth clenched. The blade pressed harder against my cheek. 
and he needs bail. Trepidation clawed at my stomach. I thought I had at least a few days to figure this out. What was I going to tell these guys? That I used the drugs with Lisa and her boyfriend instead of selling them like I was supposed to? They wouldn't even wait for Ryan to get out. They'd hack me with their switchblade and feed the fish into Bob Bay. I don't have it on me, I choked out. I left it with some friends for safekeeping while I came to the casino. Justin slowly pulled the knife away from me. Take us to it then. Hey, Tim's voice came from across the parking lot. You okay, Dakota? Avery let me go, and I stood straight. For once, I was glad to have my puppy dog following me. Tim stalked across the parking lot. What's going on? We're, uh, good here, uh, Justin tripped over his words. Tim glanced back and forth between the two lowlifes. He pulled out his badge and flashed it to them. Dakota looks like she might be having a bit of trouble with you. Fear shot across their faces. Nope, officer, we're good here, Avery said. I shook my head almost imperceptibly, but I was sure he saw it. Anger flared in his eyes. Both of you need to listen and listen good. If I see or even hear you've been within a hundred yards of her, you'll find yourselves in the back of my police car, understand? His tone sounded more like a military sergeant than a cop. It was kind of sexy. Avery and Justin nodded. Understood, Justin said, and then they both walked away.